I mean, one of those things has got to be just their their team fight prowess, right? Oh, I yeah. mean, I would say that these guys are absolutely, uh, last year they were one of the absolute best teams at being able to start fights, reset fights, and go again. I mean, their late game team fighting is absolutely astounding. Uh-oh. The rune fighting, though, that's another question. Yeah, the early push in from Gaming Gladiators seems like they're picking up the speed already, and they're going to go for the first blood on the Gabby and should be able to get it. They cop a lot of damage in return, but with three heroes here, they can keep White Mon out of lane. This is, it's almost where you wish this Enchantress could gank mid for the storm, but not with the regen differential being this large this early. And T1, they warded for it as well, so they were already thinking about what that their own safe lane jungle ob. That's an uncommon ob to ward in a lot of games. This is, you know, potentially the strength of uh, March was giving him the heads up. Ace. The 2-1-2 two, two matchup, uh, it's going to be good enough. They do manage to kill the Lycan, so they weren't able to shut him down experience-wise as much as uh, that previous lane that we were talking about. But meanwhile, the aggro tri lane does manage to find its own kill, and Gabby is also very, very low. In fact, they're going to go for the kill. He's got five stick charges, but they couldn't get the toss backwards. They didn't even necessarily need it. Quill if they just hit a, a, a toss straight up in the air, they do manage to get it. Celery just ducks forward with the Enchantress's extra movement speed she is the one impetus required to get the kill one of the best supports you can ask for in a 1v2 scenario uh maybe they will be able to keep him down but carl he's being pressured right now he's got the rest of his supports hurricane. right behind him they're gonna actually hurricane him into the storm sphere but that's perfect for carl he turns around blasts down the storm sphere with the help of zephyr and white mon and uh Unfortunately for Carl, he really wanted the rune as well. They're not going to get that. Instead, they're going to try and kill the hard camp creepy. He's forced to pop the fairy fire. If he can shove the wave in, help his team secure him for himself, goes a long way. So I, I'm I'm excited to see that T1 understand this, and they're pressuring that mid lane off the back of that lean advantage too. Double damage, Cuckoo in trouble. He'd already used the Icarus dive. He had been doing a really good job. Actually, he's going to give him a sell. Oh, no. He's... <laughs> Did he block him with the cross ward? And he blocked him with the ward. Oh, no. You saw Cuckoo. He was pinging that one. <laughs> I mean, he makes it look good. I think Cuckoo's made it look good. This hero builds decent items for the patch. He can play that utility role. His spells will do damage on their own in these matchups like versus Tiny. He always gives you amazing team fight and th the heals the sustain. I think it's an interesting hero, this patch. Maybe a bit unexplored. The one thing about this hero, though, is you, as he gets hit by a tree. Oof. That's going to be the bigger question. It kind of seems like it falls to the Shadow Shaman or Zephyr, but Shadow Shaman's not always the guy who can go in and start stuff. Yeah, for sure. Carl, he's going to get jumped on the ace. He's going to pop his ultimate, but there are plenty of T1 heroes here. They're going to actually pop that main crit from Tofu coming in from the other side. A perfect sandwich from Gaming Gladiators, but the rest of the fight may not be so good as they've managed to get the Hex. Jackals onto the Storm Sphere, locking him down and getting an important kill. A one for two trade so far. Ace is going to have to use that rest of that wolf form to get on out of here. Bristleback Ags. Okay. That's what it always is. This hero is about yeah. Vanguard and Ags and try and match that tempo of gaming gladiators. If you can get it before they try and do something like Force or Roche, I think you have a chance to fight it and deny the Storm his Aegis. Well, Gabby, he's a little bit low already, but oh, Boom actually ignores that, goes for Zephyr instead. Haste With the Haste rune, rune, he doesn't give a damn about that Hex, and they're actually going to leave their Bristleback behind. Zephyr's coming back in. They're going to pop the Egg now. Egg. With the Shackles going out, Gabby's still alive. The Egg is going to die, but Gabby, oh no, he got pushed back in great use of that owlbear by celery to kick back the original kill they were looking for three big pickups for gaming gladiators they pick themselves right back up and this is the power of that bkb rush on carl they feel confident to take the fight even if gladiators could run in with the like and tiny a addition to the shaman wars just dies so fast here yeah it does this is the power of the ages this is how you want to use it instill the fear yeah even when it's not the reality and i feel like uh like, maybe if it was just the Aegis, they, they, they might have committed to that Lena kill and be like, oh, no, we can kill him twice. But Aegis and BKB, I mean, that just looks like something you don't want to commit to. Carl is going to survive through the tiny combo, but the Storm Spirit is going to be there and actually will finish off the Aegis and maybe get White Mon as well. Yeah, with that BKB, it's going to be pretty damn easy. Carl's Aegis gets burned. The rest of Gaming Gladiators aren't in a position to go for more because some of them are currently trying to push out top. Ace, he's going to pop his ultimate here. 
out of perhaps a little bit of fear of getting caught and maybe seeing an opportunity to go for more. They're going to be able to catch with the Fiend's Grip, the Phoenix on the side, while Ace is making sure the rest of them are tucked underneath their Tier 2 tower, Ace afraid for their lives. They know they're stuck under this Tier 2. Two heroes dead and the biggest team fighter. And the tier two about to fall as well, so there won't be any TP rotation. Durachi one last one in. coming in. Dorachio is going to be the first one to jump in with his blink dagger. They spotted Zephyr, and boom will collect. Dominating streak for him now. Yeah, no, uh, no helmet dominator, no helmet of the overlord. Vlad's AC wraith pack. It's an interesting build. A bit different than your uh, old school legends. I've even seen some pub legends playing with the shard. So, okay. Don't hate it till you try it. Zephyr, though. Interesting. Blink initiation onto the Storms here. That's a perfect one. But can they do the damage fast He's enough? The, the Shackle is going to run out eventually. The BKB goes off. Boom's able to jump away. Boom's able to jump back in. Couldn't get the regen rune. That would have been a big pickup. Zephyr having some problems with some wolves here is going to be kept alive by his geek fam bro of White Mon. Those two have been together since 2020 geek fam. And uh, they stay together now on T1. White Mon protecting his other support. That is the exact type of fight T1 wants to take, and that is the power of this Pugna hero. Decrep Zephyr there and keeps them alive for the full duration of that shackle, which almost lets them get the storm. They're going to get both supports off the back end of this. Pretty nice. This is what I'm saying, man. This T1 team, <laughs> they know how to make their lineups work. They know the weaknesses, how to itemize. Oh, they're going to try and go for the bristle back. Bristle back, they didn't manage to turn around for a second, but the pullback was so long. Duranchio got around him and beat him in the face that was nasty they at least need white mon behind the bristleback right because he, he has a problem with the damage of the tiny so if you at least have decrepify behind him and some life drain heals then i bet gabby would be more fine they're gonna pop it oh, Ace, they're gonna try and initiate boom he sees the opportunity to catch the back glide and a beautiful avalanche no coming in from Duraccio. no phoenix at all and they're gonna keep gabby slowed down here while the fiend's grip also catches zephyr so they're gonna say okay screw it we can leave the bristle back behind for now let's make sure we get the shadow shaman Duraccio actually wants to keep going for it no avalanche survivor. maybe a toss back oh the tree by itself and the toss isn't gonna be quite enough but they're gonna turn around and start laying into the tier three this is the speed we were talking about gaming gladiators they like being able to end games before 30 minutes BKB going off from carl tried to just push them out of the base delivers a hefty amount of damage to celery now kicking Duraccio back as well boom's gonna reinitiate and they're actually gonna be able to bring down the phoenix again no egg for a second time boom though he's out of mana oh no traded out for a phoenix that cannot feel good both cores of gaming gladiators they thought they had an opening there to be able to, to crack open the whole game by going for the push. Tiny, Dorachi will play the, pay the price along with Boom, but the biggest thing off of this is this was this fight before the Roshan spawn. Oh no. Now T1 are gonna try and take advantage of it. Boom, buyback to contest this. Not what a disaster. They're gonna poke at White Mon here to crap vine. They quickly dispel that one, but he turns around and just starts healing through. Boom's gonna commit and manages to kill White Mon again. He's gonna be hunting that Pugna all game long alongside the Shadow Shaman, and he gets both. A double for Boom. A decent outcome for a bad situation. Well, now Carl can just go in with the Aegis, right? That's true. So yeah. now, a bit easier to get that egg off. Yeah, he's got two different frontliners who can just uh, throw their bodies out there and he can try and react to it. They're going to be able to oh, catch the tiny. Me. Immediately response from Zephyr. Drops the wards as well. Boom. Instant it's response to the support showing themselves. The Crepify is actually keeping him along, alongside the life drain, but the Fiend's grip on the Bristleback. He needs help. Somebody help him. Oh, no. He just gets beaten down by the tiny once again while Ace is, is trying to no isolate out again? Carl. No way again. The shard for nothing. And Carl limping back to his base with the Aegis, but he doesn't have a Bristleback for 50. Yeah. Double damage tiny at this point in the game is this is your entire base almost if you don't take the fight is can carl 1v4 again they're just, gonna sleep him. <laughs> they're just gonna be like okay all right you're gonna pop the glyph we're gonna go ahead and deal with you real quickly second life he's got the bkb if needed but he's all of his buildings in the mid lane are gone Immediate smoke up from T1. They're not even waiting for the Bristol Mac to be up. They're trying to catch gaming gladiators here by surprise with this I mean, time. Cuckoo wants to use an egg. He wants game, game real yeah, bad. He's gonna use it here. And they're gonna be able to catch up to some of these heroes. Shiva's going off on the side. The TP in for the Bristleback, but again, boom, being able to find the two supports, instantly demolishes them again and again and again. He 
keeps on fighting it. The egg may have gone off, but Tarachio had more than enough attack speed alongside Ace. Gabby, he doesn't have a way out of this one. He's stuck inside the tree, surrounded by so many heroes. Game and Gladiators are going to be able to match up to him. LSA, nice dodge back there. A step backwards from Gaming Gladiators. Zephyr also had to put himself in harm's way to make sure that their carry, quote unquote, got out. Look at this. Every single time, Boom has just been so locked in on what he needs to do in these fights. Every single time those supports show himself, he full zips in with his BKB and he kills both of them. And Zephyr almost dying there. Decrepify is going to bail him out for a second here, but he tosses. It's going to nice land on his trap. head. Beautiful war trap that is going to be able to catch Celery. Duraccio is able to fight his way out, but he slowed down the Shivas and he's not going to get out with the Silver Edge either. In fact, they're going to look for more and they do find it. Tofu dies as well. A triple pickup for T1. Maybe getting a little overconfident here. Yeah. Also, I mean, this Aghanim Scepter is such a big time. You were talking about how the way they can play in and out of the team fights. Well, now all three of their cores can very rapidly get in and oh, out of yeah. the team fight. He's level 22, so he's got that extra duration. And he's just biting him up here already. I don't know if T1's ready for this wolf. He starts making his way over. It's a big, bad rock wolf coming in, and Bristleback is already about to be dying here. Zephyr tries to jump in. Boom's already popped his BKB. A beautiful axe jump that is going to be able to once again destroy the back line. Carl throws what damage he can at Tofu, but that is looking like it's it right here. It's a Lycan plus tiny lineup. You've got four dead with no buyback. That's it. T1 calls it GG. Gaming Gladiators, they take the speed. They take the peace pace they take the tempo and uh well they didn't make it by 30 but 33 minutes they close out the game very fast paced game from them some early little interactions going gabby's way here and it's gonna be nice because eventually this beast will be very annoying for this tiny level five to six range yeah you're hoping you can get ahead of that curve Build some space for Whitemon as well. This Top is not lane going for the kill. Cuckoo, he's going to get hit by this ink swell. And I think he's going to have a hard time surviving through it. But Tofu is also potentially going to die here. He gets off the last hit before Tofu goes down. So they do get the first blood for Duraccio. Won the majority of these rune fights in both games. RNG going their way a little bit. Well, something to be said about it is I do feel like when all these supports go mid, Gaming Gladders have felt better about it because they have some of these lanes where they're happy to build that pressure up like we're seeing here. Yeah. Like, Cuckoo does not want to be left alone in this game. And at the same time, Gabby, he's not going to want to be bottom for alone too much in this game. Whereas Ace is super happy to just get the solo XP. Build up his boar army here. Now, White Mom, those are two level three boars. Yeah, the arrow Blocks is going to be blocked out by the boar. And Boom's going to join in here to be able to get the kill on a White Mon. He has a roar now. He does have a roar. They can actually turn this, but Carl's actually going to show up. A split earth and magic damage. It's not enough. Boom. Gets away just in time, perhaps a little bit of help there from Ace with the roar. This Duraccio CK, though, the real benefit of all of this chaos, it feels like. Hey, he is chaos so nice. far ahead for this early in the game. My yeah. God, this guy has a secret Midas or something? Like, yeah, what? <laughs> what the hell is 4, going on? 4,000 net worth? What? I mean, he's doubling up Cuckoo off this lane. He's only gotten two kills. I'm confused. Like, I Must mean, have been one big of them was ones. first blood. Gabby. Goes for the toss back here, but the creeps are going to chase after him. It's a Cedar Mind Stealer. Are we obs to see him? Oh, nice play. nice play from Zephyr. Dropping that war to be able to get the vision. Finishing off the Storm Spirit kill. He's got one leap and one leap only to get out of here. Perfect angle. Trying to defend this tower, but this zoo is slowly building up, you know. Started out as a little local petting zoo. Now we're, <laughs> we're upgrading to the... What is it? Metropolitan Center? Sure. Uh oh. <laughs> it's going to be a dead lush wreck. Do you think he should have gone like top instead? I mean, I, he Cuckoo doesn't want him there because he's not level six yet. This game, they probably felt like the zoo was coming, trying to prepare for a little more. But their best interaction is this brewmaster who got shut down on lane. Zip in with the ink swell. They're going to be able to chain stun up this tiny, perhaps. He gets off the avalanche, but ultimately the damage was still laid out there. With now Red Cuckoo's in. here. Cuckoo is here, and he's going to need as many kills as possible with this ultimate. They're going to start off with Ace. He uses the roar and the extra movement speed to try and get out. He will not. Carl runs him down. But that bottom tower is still probably going to go down here with Celery pushing. Arrow on mid? Maybe? Oh, nice. Smart play there, Tofu. 
He tanks it up for him. President's bodyguard shows up just in time. And he went, did not feel confident enough to try and stop him. Yeah, who needs a Dark Troll Summoner? Just uh, various various neutrals from the Enchantress will finish it up by itself. Three oh! Centaur stomp from what the a Troll. Centaur stomp! This guy's playing for one of these teams. God damn. That's the MVP play right there. That's I'm gonna give me a replay. Really White Mon. Goodbye. Gaming Gladiators on the hunt here. Boom, gonna be able to find the Brana with that Inkswell combination. That is just such a pretty chain stun. And T1, Cuckoo's gonna be in some trouble when he comes down. They actually found Carl though. Carl, who you said was going to be the biggest factor in shutting down this Chaos Knight, a big kill in addition to the three that they already had on the side of Gaming Gladiators. And now they're going to take Roshan for themselves. So a 15 and a half minute Roshan. That's an Aegis for Boom. Well, T1, they are one of the best teams at this major at being able to stall out a game. But simultaneously, Gaming Gladiators have shown themselves at being one of the best to lock it down. Boom. Long range jump. Got to be able to spot Carl and Zaraccio nice right dodge, alongside him. Really good nightmare dodge, but it's not going to be enough to be able to save Carl. And with Carl dead, boom, he may actually still die here. But remember, he has double, to double primal roar. Good setup there from the Grimstroke with Ace following it up in an ink swell on top. That's going to be able to catch Gabby one by one by one. T1 will be falling here, and that's going to be a team wipe. Didn't even drop the Aegis. Know your place, says Tofu. So they still got another two and a half minutes to utilize that tool. Carl here farming Ancients, but not for long. Duranchio. They've already moved over. Fortunately for Carl, not so fortunate for Whitemon. Because he can abuse these matchups that heroes have trouble interacting with him early. And top of giving you the vision to help other heroes play very confidently. Look at Celery right now. I mean, yeah, he's an Enchantress, but... Maybe he should have a bit more fear. Yeah, they try and burst through the creeps, and they actually did manage to kill the creeps to allow the arrow to land. That gets the kill on Celery. Boom, maybe losing his Aegis here, but first Carl's gonna go down. And now with the roar on Gabby, the follow-up Inkswell stun, Chaos Knight bolts. There's tons of stuns coming out for delayed. Gaming Gladiators. Reality Rift with the uh, bind coming in from the Grimstroke. Gonna be able to catch more of these heroes, but the Moonlight Shadow allows them to slip away into the night. Round two here for Boom. Celery's happy to give his life there to give all the vision for that engagement. Yeah. No lack of damage for the for this side, I'll tell you that much. And look at him, they are just yep. non-stop hunting down heroes. Cuckoo shows, immediately boom, and the rest of the team is on their way. Cuckoo's dead. Zephyr forced to use all his leap charges, and the Chaos Bolt was still going out, so Darachi is going to catch him as well. Nobody on T1 is allowed out on the map, it seems. She can frontline every smoke gank. You have to run through her. That's what Celery knows. He can just play so aggressive. Yeah. It's another factor limiting T1's, co T1's comeback potential. I mean, they're stepping out. Time the moment they do, there's Boom. Catches them. Primal Roar. No chance to pop the ultimate for Cuckoo. Once again, he's got a long cooldown ult that he's just never really being allowed to use. And Durachi on the other side of things. He's got a five shot, Carl. Didn't even need the Phantasm. Just did it the old school <laughs> way. <laughs> That's not going to feel great. Okay. A good okay. Big, big kill. Oh, but Durachio's in. Nightmare self safe, but the Inkswell stun still lands on it, too. They are still dead. Yeah. You got me, says Boom. Tips White Mon. GG is already called by T1. Wow. What an absolute one-sided stomp by Gaming Gladiators over T1. They are going to be moving on to the upper bracket semifinals to face up against TSM.